What's up, Empowered Christians? This is Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries. Today we are starting the Empowered Christian Roadmap video series. We begin with chapter one. In section one, the purpose of it all. And we're going to begin with subsection A called, They're Not Our Roads. So this idea behind the map is that in order for us to get to the right destination at the end of our journey, we need to begin with the right map. If we start with the wrong map, we're going to take the wrong course and end up at the wrong destination. So the most important thing for us when we get started is to realize something that, that often is not taught in the church enough, I don't think, which is that it's really not our roads. It's, it's a journey we're going on, but it's not our roads. And what I mean by that is a lot of times we, we come thinking, what does the Bible have to say to me so that I can uh, get this out of my life? Or what is the Bible telling me to do? Or I need to solve this problem or challenge in my life. What does the Bible have to say about that? What we really should be asking is, who is this about? Who is this story about? The Bible is a narrative. It's a story with, a, with someone at the heart of the story. And it's not us. The Bible and all of history, the entire creation, all of the universe and everything that was made was created by God and for God. So if we begin any study or anything in life asking the question, what am I supposed to do? How does this affect me? How do I get what I want? We're focusing on ourselves. And if we focus on ourselves, then we're, we're already starting off on the wrong part of the journey. We're already starting out wrong because we're, we think it's us-centered. We think it's me-centered. And the truth is, it's not. It's not about you. It's, it's a journey you're going on, but it's not, your, it's not your journey, your map, your roads. It's God's story, His roads. So, we begin with this God-centered view of reality and then we learn how we fit into His plan later. We don't begin with ourselves and then discover God. We learn about God and then we learn about who we are in that process. And that will ensure that we are on the right track because we're seeing things as they really are, not as we wish them to be, which is often focusing on ourselves. So in, in that section, I equate God deciding to create everything God created everything and he did so why why did he create everything he did so for his own glory he he wanted to <laughs> it pleased him and made him happy to create everything right that's why he did it he didn't have to do that he didn't have to create everything he did so for his own glory that's why there is a creation. That's why anything exists at all. That's why you exist. That's why I exist. To bring God glory. And what we're learning as you, as you study scripture and you get to know the heart of God is that God essentially creates an environment, an opportunity for beings like us who are intelligent and emotional 
and spiritual and uh, you know we have all these you know talents and, and different abilities and we can use them remember I said everything was created for God's glory so either we use them to bring glory to God or we use them for some other purpose to bring glory to ourselves or something else which essentially takes away from God's glory it's it's something that he made that is no longer producing him glory for it to exist right so I I liken this to God's a painter and he creates this painting and if the painting is wonderful and beautiful and it, it reflects and represents the best of God's artistic creative you know creative endeavor and and his talent and and all of his attributes that go into that creation if it represents him well then it glorifies him and then he's glorified by that thing and if it doesn't represent him if it's unlike him then it doesn't bring him glory right it's it's something that is a blemish and he would just toss it out a lot we often don't think about that what if 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 there's things that God made that don't bring him glory why doesn't he just destroy them well it's kind of good that he doesn't because all of us would fall into that category <laughs> all of us who have fallen short and who have sinned against him and rebelled and we it's a good thing he didn't just destroy us he found that there was a way just as he created us to begin with and that was him putting himself the best of himself into that creation it's a ref it's a reflection a representation of some of his attributes he can see that we have fallen short and sinned against him and we've become something that no longer gives him glory fortunately for us by him being our rescuer our savior our deliverer our healer our fixer he he rescues us from the mess that we've gotten ourselves into and he cleans us up and he makes us a new creation and he he invites us into a, an eternal purpose and by doing that he he actually represents and reflects even more of himself right it's there's more that goes into that process that represents who he truly is and represents his glory and his attributes in a way that that express his glory through that process of transforming these broken things right even more than just creating us so fortunately for us he redeems us and restores us and he's making us new and that is how he's being glorified through all of us who are being saved through all of us who are being transformed now there are those who will reject the gospel and who will just categorically reject God they will continue to worship themselves they will continue to sin against him and rebel against him they will continue to do evil and they'll follow you know they'll follow Satan's ways all the way to hell and but God is also glorified in what he's going to do with them as well because in the meantime he's just pouring out his patience not destroying them immediately because God's eternal he he knows what happens he knows who will eventually say yes and who won't and those who eventually don't he's he expresses his own his own attribute of patience and mercy by allowing them to continue to live and do what they're doing even though he knows they won't repent and they won't end up being transformed for good so he is he is glorified and then one day they will be judged eternally and cast into the lake of fire so he's glorified by those of us who are being transformed and saved and he'll also be glorified in the destruction of those who will ultimately be destroyed so 
as much as that is painful for us to you know to know and to think about that God will ultimately you know s- separate himself eternally from those who are lost and who you know and they'll be cast into hell and that's and that's a terrible shame but we need to remember that God is going to be glorified one way or the other he's either glorified in transforming us or he'll be glorified by patiently enduring the rest and then judging and punishing those who continue in their rebellion but either way God will be glorified so it's up to each of us to make sure that we're on the right side of history that we're in the former camp who are tra- being saved and transformed rather than in the latter camp who are going to be damned and by doing that by starting our journey there seeing these two ends and knowing why they both exist and knowing the purpose behind that we can go through the rest of our journey with this clear sight okay if anything bad happens on our journey it's to help us be transformed for good right if anything good happens to those who are on the way to destruction it was either an opportunity for them to change course and join those who are being transformed and saved or it's an example of God's love and mercy and patience towards them right and we don't know ultimately who's going to end up in this one path but we can rejoice in knowing that God is going to be glorified and that all these things are working for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose so as you are beginning this journey and throughout the journey just remembering that it's not our it's not about us it's about God it's about his story it's about what it's not about what brings us glory it's about what brings him glory right and a lot of the other problems that people have introduced that are false they're usually centered around us focusing more on ourselves and less on us focusing on God and what he cares about and what brings him glory so as long as you continue to to point in that direction that is this bringing God glory and that's your 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 compass north as long as I'm paying attention to that I won't go too far wrong and we need to be on the right side of history to be to glorify God with our continued existence and our transformation and only those of us who are being transformed into something good fall into that category or we will glorify God through our destruction ultimately let that empower you because it's not about what you muster up the strength to do it's not about how good you are it's about your life your existence it's about your little mini story and how that contributes to God's glory in his larger story right and the more broken you were and the more things he brings you through the more transforming he does the more he is glorified so look at your own brokenness and don't see it as the thing holding you back look at it as the thing that will bring God glory the more he works through all that stuff in the end so the more broken you are the more opportunity you have believe it or not the more opportunity you have to bring God glory as the great deliverer the great transformer our Heavenly Father our Lord and Savior Jesus and our comforter our counselor the Holy Spirit 
So I pray that that blesses you, and I'll see you in the next one. Go and have an empowered week.